Welcome options traders. Hello everyone. And I wanted to do a follow-up video from the one that I posted last week on the money flow index. And today I wanted to talk about another technical indicator called the Chaikin money flow or CMF. And it's a really good follow-up to the money flow index because both technical indicators try to relate volume to the stock price action. This is also a great index for those of you who use a straight oscillator, a price oscillator such as RSI or MACD. So let's take a closer look at the Chaikin money flow. So the Chaikin money flow index or the CMF was developed by Mark Chaikin. And let me also say I am a huge fan of Mark Chaikin's work. I followed him since really since the 90s, always does quality work. I actually know Mark and can certainly vouch for his work in the technical analysis field. So pretty much anything that he does you'll find is very, very quality work. And what he's trying to do with this indicator is to measure money flow volume. Like all the technical indicators, they usually have a look back period. Most of the ones we've seen recently were 14 days. But for the money flow here, he suggests going back 20 or 21 days. Of course, we can always change that. So you can tweak these to anything that you want for whatever reason. But remember, one of the primary reasons that technical indicators work is because everybody's looking at them and moving in and out of stocks at the same time. So that's another reason why you usually want to stick with these default ranges. The formula for the check and money flow looks a little convoluted like all technical indicators do, but once you break them down, you're going to find out it's not so bad. So let me just show you the overall, the outline for the formula, and then we'll break it down. First of all, he calculates what's called a money flow multiplier or MFM. And this is the longest calculation you're going to have to do for check and money flow. It's still a very easy calculation, but it is the longest of the ones you'll need to do. I'll do a detailed example in a moment, but once we have that number, you then need to calculate the money flow volume or MFV. And that is simply found by taking the MFM that we found in step one and multiplying it by the stock's volume. Again, you're going to look back a certain number of days. So if we're looking at, let's say the 20 period CMF, that would be the sum of the money flow volume divided by the sum of the actual volume. So really what he's trying to do here to just conceptualize, he's creating a calculation to do what we might call a transformation or an adjusted type of volume to account for money flow. And then he's going to compare that to the actual volume. And that's why it's called an index. We're just trying to see how much bigger this money flow volume is in relation to the actual volume. Let's take a look at the details of the money flow multiplier. What you're going to do is look back a certain number of days. Again, I'm going to use 20 days or 20 periods. So again, that just means if you're looking at a minute chart, you'd be looking back 20 minutes. I'm going to assume a day chart. So we're going to look back 20 days. And during that 20 day period, we're going to look at the close minus the low. And from that, we're going to subtract the high minus the close. And we're going to take that number and divide it by the high minus the low. Confusing? Yes, it certainly looks that way. But let me just show you how easy it is and to understand it conceptually. Let's say that our stock is down here trading for 100. And over this 20 day period, it has hit a 110 high. And right now, I'm going to put the stock price right in between there at 105. So what would our money flow multiplier be with the stock right here, halfway between the low and the high during this range? Well, take a look. First of all, it says take the close minus the low. Closing price is 105 minus the low of 100. Well, that's five. And we're going to subtract off the high minus the close. So 110 minus 105 is again five. So if we subtract those out, we get zero. And then he says to take that number and divide it by the high minus the low. So that would be 10. So zero divided by 10 gives us a check and money flow multiplier of zero. So that's an important benchmark. And I'll talk about that a little bit more later in the video, but zero is your halfway point. We've seen in other indicators where it might be at 50, could be different numbers depending on how they standardize them. So the zero line right here tells us that the current stock price, current closing price is halfway between the low and the high over this 20 day window. Now, what if instead of making the current stock price 105, 
Let's say it was actually at 110, the stock closed at the high. So now our closing price is the same as the high. So if we take the close minus the low, that's going to give us 10. And if we subtract off the high minus the close, that is also 110 minus 110, or zero. Right, the high and the close are the same. So if we subtract them out, we get zero. And if we divide that by the high minus the low, 110 minus 100 is 10. So 10 minus zero over 10 equals one. So what that tells you is that if the stock is at the high, the money flow multiplier is one. And finally, let's say that the closing price is down here at the low, so that the close and the low are now the same. Well, look at what the formula tells you. Close minus the low is going to be zero. We subtract off the high minus the close, 110 minus 100, which is 10. That gives us minus 10. And then he says to divide that by the high minus the low, which is 110 minus 100, or 10. So minus 10 divided by 10 gives us negative one. So just remember, if the stock price is halfway between the high and the low, money flow multiplier is zero. If you're at the high, the multiplier is one, and if you're at the low, it's negative one. So like most of the oscillators that we've seen so far, the check and money flow is also bounded. That just means that there's a range where it must fall. And in this case, it must fall somewhere between negative one and positive one. Zero is the center line. However, these extremes are rare, this minus one and plus one, because it would take 20 straight days of closing at the high to get plus one, or 20 straight days of closing at the low to get negative one. So you're going to find that most of the time, the check and money flow indicator is going to fall somewhere between eh, minus a half to plus a half, maybe even tighter ranges than that, minus 0.30 to plus 0.30, but it tends to stay in a fairly tight range, even though minus one and plus one are the extremes. So how do we read the check and money flow? Well, there's a number of ways we can do it. First of all, it measures buying and selling pressure. So if we get positive readings, anytime our check and money flow number is positive, it shows buying pressure. And obviously negative readings will show selling pressure. So a lot of times what happens is that traders will use the CMF to confirm trends or look for divergences. So for example, maybe you see the stock price trending up and you can say, well, that's exactly what shake and money flow shows. So I now have more confidence that we are in a true trend. However, what if I see the stock price trending up, but maybe the CMF turning negative? That would be a divergence. And in that case, I might really question that trend. Is it occurring because of volume? Doesn't look like it. It's probably just because traders are becoming overzealous and bidding the stock's price up higher and higher. And that we will probably call into question. So that's another use for using the CMF. Now, a couple of things to be careful of. You have to be careful of crossings. A lot of the previous oscillators, I said that whenever it crosses from the low side through that center line, it might be a buy signal. Or if it crosses from the high side down through the center line, it's a sell signal can't quite be uh, that clean and neat with the check and money flow. So remember, zero is the center line, but crossings, the simple act of that line going from below above or from above down below is not really a good signal. And that's because you do get a lot of noise. You're gonna find out that that line will oscillate quite quickly back and forth around zero. And so what happens is that if you use that for a signal, traders end up with many false signals. They buy and it turns out to be a false breakout, and they sell and it turns out to be a false breakdown. They're just constantly getting in and out. So to help with this, what a lot of traders will do is they will create bands above and below zero. So maybe you'll say, for example, I'm not worried about if the line crosses zero, but maybe if it crosses negative 0.05 or crosses above positive 0.05 or maybe minus 0.08 and positive 0.08. We wanna keep them fairly tight, but we're not necessarily going to pull the trigger just because it crosses zero. We wanna see a little bit more follow through. So a lot of times you'll see traders talk about bands above and below zero for the check and money flow indicator. A second thing you have to be careful with with the CMF is with gaps. So with a gap, that simply means that the stock's price made a big jump 
from let's say yesterday's closing price to today's opening bell. So maybe the stock closed at 100 yesterday and the first trade on the opening bell is 110. That's a gap opening. And we call it a gap because you're going to see a great big blank space on your chart because there were no interim prices. It just made a big jump. Well, the CMF doesn't consider closing prices. Instead, it looks at the close relative to the high and low. So if you get, for example, a large gap down, but the stock rallies during the day and closes near the high, keep in mind that's the high of the day. It's still down very big, but it closes near the high of the day. The CMF will actually be positive. So just because you see the money flow showing positive doesn't necessarily mean that you should be thinking that the trend is bullish. You still want to look at the overall trend. And if there's a large gap down, I'd be paying much more attention to that than to the CMF. Conversely, you could also see a large gap up, but if the stock closes near the low of that day, CMF will actually be negative. So even though you see this great big price change to the upside, it would certainly lead you to believe that you're in a bullish trend, that the CMF can actually show negative. But if you think about the calculation, it makes sense. It's just trying to say, where is the closing price relative to these extremes? And so just because the stock makes a big, let's say a gap down, but if it rallies near the close, yes, by the calculation, it's going to show that that is a positive money flow. Another thing that throws the calculation too is that on the big gap days, you normally have very, very large volumes. And as we'll find out in the calculation, when we multiply those out, ends up giving a lot of weight to those gaps. So the point to understand is always remember that the trend is your friend. If you see a big gap up or a big gap down, pay far more attention to that than to what the CMF is showing you. Let's take a look at an Excel spreadsheet and I've downloaded three months worth of data for NVIDIA. So we're going back, let's say to 4.9 here, we had an opening of 216.80. Here's our high low close for the day and here is the volume for the day. We're just showing that day by day for this stock. So here's the way that the CMF calculation would take place. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to come up with this money flow multiplier. Now keep in mind that money flow multiplier is this big long formula that we talked about earlier. That's what we're showing right here in this column. Once we have that, we need the volume for the stock. Now, as I've done in many of the previous videos, I'm going to just truncate it somewhat so the volumes aren't so large. So this was the actual volume here, almost 12 and a half million. And I'm just going to take that and divide it by a thousand. It's not going to change a single thing with your readings, just makes the numbers easier to follow. So this is the actual volume of the stock divided by a thousand. And then finally, we come up with the money flow volume. So what he does is he takes the money flow multiplier times the volume, and that gives us this MFV or money flow volume. So again, what he's doing is he's saying, let's compare this adjusted volume, adjusted for money flow, and compare it to the regular volume. So the only reason I need this money flow multiplier is to calculate the money flow volume. Other than that, I don't really need it. The whole idea is to compare these two volumes. So we just do this day by day all the way through. And then once we've reached 20 days worth of data, which is in this box, those are 20 days worth of data, I come down here and in my first calculation for the shake and money flow, I'm going to take the sum of the money flow volume. That's right here. I'm going to add up all those numbers and I'm going to divide it by the sum of the volume. So again, I'm just calculating an index. How much bigger or smaller is this volume, the sum, compared to this? And when we do that, we get 0.09. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift this box down by one day. So my next day is going to show, again, looking back 20 days, is just going to be the values in this red box. And then I'm going to shift it down again and so on. I'm just going to keep working my way down the list. And so this becomes, graph of that line right there is what you would see on your chart. Now, once again, notice how very rarely does it ever get near one or minus one. I actually had very few negative numbers in here, but a lot of times just stays pretty close to zero, definitely within minus a half and plus a half.
is going to be the norm. Now, another little interesting thing that I did here is to actually graph the first 20 periods right here for the closing prices. Just looking at those prices right there. And that's what you're seeing in this graph. So you can see the stock moved from about 215 up to about 240. Nice little uptrend. But take a look at the money flow. Money flow was close to zero. Most of the volume took place around the center line. So this might be a good example where we would question this little uptrend right here. It would have been a whole lot more significant if we had actually gotten a negative number right here. But that's really what we're trying to compare is the money flow volume compared to the actual volume. So if we scroll all the way down through here, the past three months, I've got a value of minus 0.09. And so this chart actually runs through July 6th. So we're going to be off a little bit because I'm not taking into account today's numbers. But we should be fairly close to minus 0.09. Let's go into the E-Trade platform and see how it measures up. So here we are in E-Trade. I've got NVIDIA. Click on Studies and All Studies. And I'm going to find my C's. And right here is the Shake and Money Flow. Click there. Look Back Period. 20 is the default, 20 or 21. The platform defaults to 20, but you could make it anything that you want. You can also change the color of the line. Click on Save. And then I'm going to expand this a little bit. Like many of the oscillators, it is a lower study, mostly because it just wouldn't make any sense to overlay it against dollars up here in prices. We're looking at an index, so it sits off of your price chart. But take a look down here. Current reading is minus 0.11. We came up with minus 0.09, but we were also looking at uh, Friday's closing prices. So let's go take a look at Friday. I'm going to pull up the crosshairs here, and let's go back to 7.6. And right there, you can see about 0.0965, so pretty close to what we came up with. So that's how the CMF line, this black line that you're looking at, is calculated. As a reminder, take a look at this center line right here. This little horizontal line is at zero. Very highest value we could ever get is plus one. Very lowest is minus one. As I talked about before, very rarely does it even exceed plus 0.5 or minus 0.5. Now, if you look closely, you'll see that we actually had a little gap opening right here that I was talking about. You see that little break in the prices right there. That could also happen to the downside. Kind of like we got up over here, gap down. And on a day like this, if you see the stock price gapping up, but if the closing was near the low, you might see the shaken money flow actually show negative, even though you really should be reading that as positive. Conversely, if you see a gap down like this, and keep in mind it depends on a number of factors and the volume. I'm just saying it could happen. You're going to see a big gap down like this, but the shake in money flow might actually show positive. So on days like that, when you get those gap openings, whether up or down, if you're getting a what seems to be a contradictory reading on your CMF, I would just ignore it and pay far more attention to the trend of the price. So another way to read this, unlike some of the other oscillators where we can say overbought and oversold, we're really looking for confirmation of a trend. So for example, right here, we got this nice big gap up and this nice long follow through right here. But look at the money flow. It was all coming in on increasing prices. So this would actually show a little bit more confidence about this trend right here. So again, we're not really trying to say that the stock is overbought or oversold. We're just trying to find out how much of this volume is coming in due to rising prices or due to falling prices. And so when we see that the shaken money flow line is getting relatively high, starting to get towards plus one up in this direction, then we have a lot more confidence that that trend is coming in on increasing volume. Conversely, if we see it down here, pushing down towards negative one, we have a lot more confidence that that trend is coming through from falling prices. That's where most of that volume is coming from. So now everyone has a new tool, a new technical indicator to help confirm those trends. It's incredibly important for options traders, especially if you're trying to see, should we hang on to this position and ride this trend, or is it perhaps a better time to hedge, roll, and morph? Check out the Chaken Money Flow CMF, post any questions you have here in the group, and please let me know what you think. 
If you'd like to learn more about the art and science of options trading, please check out the Alpha Trader course at optionsa-z.com. You can also join us on the Facebook trading group, Options A to Z. It's a free site, lots of great videos, market commentary. We'd love to see you there.